Okay, here we are with a parallel RC circuit. Resistive, capacitive, RC, parallel. And we're gonna try and find impedance, total circuit opposition, and total current. Okay. We could do it a couple of ways to get the impedance. We're gonna start off with the formula version this time. And what I need to do is it's, it's kind of that product sum and Pythagoras mashup in the formula of my resistance and my XC, my capacitive reactance. So I need to calculate that first. Quick reminder on how to do that. Long formula, we can do it. Now we wanna make sure again, that we when we're dividing by a quantity, We put that whole quantity in parentheses. So one divided by parentheses, two pi, double check your frequency. Here we've got 400 Hertz times 132.6, second function, double E minus six, the little negative with the parentheses around it. And what do we come up with? Three ohms. Here's that mashup formula. It looks a little like product sum, but also like Pythagoras, right? Because the objective here, as we remember, with our parallel circuit rules, is the total circuit opposition is gonna be less than either one of these in an RC circuit. So as we plug that in, what do we get? Two point four ohms. And sure enough, that's less than either one of those. Less than three, less than four, 2.4, <clears throat> excuse me. So now we're gonna find out our currents, vectorally add them, and then do Ohm's law just to double check our impedance. And the formulas we'll use are Ohm's law. The current on the resistor uses the voltage and the resistance, the values on the resistor. Likewise for the capacitor, the voltage here and its ohmic value. Now, remember what do I like to do when I, I draw parallel circuits? I didn't do it, I probably should have done it already, is draw my voltage on both branches. And once I have those written up there, it's pretty intuitive, volts and ohms. And what do we get? 120 divided by three is 40 amps. 120 divided by four is 30 amps flowing. Now those amps are not in phase with each other, so they don't just add simple arithmetic, uh, ar ar arithmetically. So what we do is we vector them 90 degrees apart. So I drew the formula, which is Pythagorean theorem, and that'll yield our total current. We can also look at them as vectors because that's what Pythagorean is. A squared plus B squared is C squared. And 50 amps, whether we use the formula or let's confirm. 120 divided by 2.4, 50 amps. Now these 50 amps are not necessarily gonna be in phase with the voltage or 90 degrees out. Remember, they're a mix between the two. They'll combine and they'll kind of pull. The resistor wants to pull it in phase, the capacitor 90 degrees out. So they're gonna meet somewhere in the middle. And because there are more reactive amps than there are resistive, that angle is greater than 45 it's more capacitive than it is resistive. Could we figure out angle theta from here? Yes. Angle theta, the cosine of angle theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So what we do when we know the ratio is we put in the arc cosine or second function cosine that's what it gives you in the calculator. And we put the ratio 
of this side adjacent over hypotenuse. We put 30 divided by 50 in there. And what would we get? We'd get 53.1 degrees. And that's what that angle would be. So that would mean that the net current, the total current, will be leading in a capacitor, current leads, the current would be leading the voltage by 53.1 degrees. That is the combined, the vectorally combined current.